How you doing folks? Well, I'm in absolutely no humour to be doing any sort of mechanical work this evening, to be honest with you. It's a Friday evening, it's raining out, and uh, I'm working on a van so I can't fit it into a garage. And, um, yeah, just not in the mood, but um, the fact of the matter is I'm supposed to be going somewhere in the van tomorrow and I can't be dealing with it anymore. The engine is gutless. I was uh, I went to try and overtake a uh, truck yesterday on the uh, motorway. Went uh, he was going 80k. I wanted to go from 80k to 100k, and it took about 15 seconds to do it. So there's definitely something wrong, and I have to get to the bottom of it because it's driving me mad. The amount of hard work and effort I've put into the engine to this point, it's like it's letting me down at the last hurdle, and there's definitely something wrong. Now I feel like the turbo is not boosting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath and I'm going to have a look and make sure the wastegate is actually uh, fully closed at this point in time because um, it should be in this uh, in this state um, with the engine off and if it is uh, if it is fully closed we need to start looking at everything else and then I'm going to start uh, having a look going through the diagnostics looking at the uh, I've plugged the VCDS cable in again and we'll see if we can figure it out so uh, let's have a look at the turbo first of all Okay, so the great thing about uh, T25s with their engine being over on its side like this is uh, that uh, the things like fuel pump and alternator and um, all that are quite easily accessible. The problem is the turbo is on the other side, so uh, I need to get in underneath the van and actually have a look at that. I've got a channel locks, this one's a piece of crap, but I'm going to uh, use that to see if I can move the wastegate if, uh, if it is stuck. And uh, just make sure that it is actually moving anyway, so um, we'll see how it looks. Okay, so there is the uh, wastegate actuator, the black canister, and that there is the lever for the wastegate. Um, so uh, basically what we need to do is we need to make sure that that's actually uh, moving freely. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the channel locks to um, grab hold of it and try and just move it. It's not the most accessible location in the world, but you just see, I'm trying to do this one handed, it's also quite tricky. Okay, um, I actually have to have a hold of the wastegate here. That's moving fine. So, you can actually hear the valve closing it, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's it's good and bad thing, because if it was uh, if it was stuck, that would answer our question and tell us what was actually wrong with the, what, with the, with the turbo. So let's have a quick look at our hoses. They're all new hoses, I mean, there shouldn't be anything broken. But um, that there comes around from a wastegate and goes up to the uh, N75 solenoid. And the N75 solenoid I tested, and it was working fine when I tested it. So, oh. right, as I said, not in the mood. Anyway, so it comes up to comes up to this solenoid here, which is on the uh, bulkhead in the van. And um, there's one side goes to the uh, intake manifold down here, well, the the inlet pipe. Um, the other piece goes to the um, to the turbo uh, uh, inlet uh, intake um, scroll housing, and then the other side goes to the, the wastegate uh, the wastegate actuator. So you have three pipes basically going onto it. Um, but to be honest with you, they're all fine. I mean, just checking that pipe there. Um, yeah, that's it's unfortunate that's uh, that's the case because it would have been a well. Let's just say sometimes these mechanical issues can be easier to resolve than the electronic issues. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, right. Let's get the uh, let's get the VCDS cable plugged in, and we're going to start going through it that way. Okay, it's at this point I want to say, just um, take the opportunity to uh, say thanks to everybody who's uh, kind of pointed me in the right direction to um, resolve the uh, issues I'm having. There's been a lot of people offering a lot of advice and help in that as well too, um, and um, it is appreciated. So uh, thank you everybody who uh, who has so far. Um, so uh, a couple of people have given me uh, kind of indications as to what to look for on VCDS. So we're gonna we're gonna do that and we're gonna try and find out uh, what the story is. Okay, so um, here's the uh, what the uh, EGR valve should be, or the mass airflow should be uh, reading, and that's what it is reading now. Apparently, it's 450 to 500 is what I should be seeing uh, with the EGR deleted. Now it's 535. I, I'm not sure if that's actually uh, right, to be honest with you. Um, but I, I'm going to do a bit of googling anyway and see. Um, personally, I don't think that is the problem. To tell you the truth, so. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's basically uh, that, um, that the EGR has been deleted in this instance. Okay, so I have the engine ticking over there now anyway, as you can hear, and uh, I have uh, these gauges up. I actually figured out how to get the um, qu uh, quantitative readings, because up until now I've only been kind of getting qualitative readings, which is not really real use to me at this point. Um, so what we have here is we have specified natural mass air pressure and uh, mass air flow as well too. So uh, that should go up to about 800. I'd be expecting to see, um, uh, well let's see, um, Yeah, you see, that's the thing I don't get, right? Well, that, that's obviously, that must be an absolute reading rather than a gauge reading then. So we should be getting a, uh, we, let, let's just say we have a bar, for example, now as atmospheric, we should be getting an extra um, an extra bar on top of that. So what we'll do is we'll see what we get up to and um, we will uh, kind of interpret it then. So what we need to do, first of all, is just take it for a drive. Um, I need to um, kick this pig, let's just say, uh, drive it off up the road and get some, uh, get the EGT up a little bit as well too. So, um, yeah, uh, let's do that. Okay, so I took it for a drive there, so now I have my maximum readings as well too. So look at the, looking at that, it, it, to be honest with you, the, the turbo's boosting fine. So, you know, we're getting at 1927, so that's nearly two bar. Um, I, like that, that'd be an absolute, two bar absolute. So that's uh, two bar, uh, including atmospheric pressure essentially. Uh, and then just looking at the um, mass air flow, we should be getting a max of around 800, let's say. Uh, and we're getting 847. So uh, to be honest with you, that's in my mind, that's within the within the limits. Now, what is interesting, though, and this is, I think, my, maybe what what's causing the problem. This little guy down here, two milligrams per stroke for fueling. It's supposed to be between three and nine. So I think I need to increase that first of all. So I'm going to put that up to four and see how we get on. I mean, if it's between three and nine, look, if it smokes like a demon when I do it, or or. Uh, um, it's given too much. Like that's that's way too low. So let's uh, let's see how we get on. And uh, I need to figure out how to do that. So I have to be, I have a little bit of noodling to do on the computer here. So uh, I'm going to leave the engine running and try and figure it out. Okay. So I took the van for a drive again. Um, after uh, adjusting the injection quantity, I put it. Uh, it was coming in at about uh, 3.54 uh, kind of thing while the engine was running. So it was definitely a little bit more than it was before. But the problem is that's as far as it'll let me go. Um, now I was doing a bit of reading and there's all this talk about what they call the hammer mod, which essentially means you undo, you undo the lid of the, uh, um, in the injection pump quantity adjuster and uh, tap it left or right with a hammer. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not going down that route just yet. I'm not looking to get 150 horsepower out of this. I'm just making. I'm, I just wanted to give the power it's supposed to be giving. You know, I mean, I put larger injectors in, and I got the engine remapped to 110 horsepower, so it should be kind of giving me that that 110 horsepower quite easily. I would have thought. I don't feel it is though. I think it's if it's giving me 90, I'd be very surprised. I'd say it's more like 70. Um, as I said before in another video, the AAZ engine was quicker off the mark. I mean, okay, fair enough, it topped out, but this engine, it just feels like you're working it all the time to try and get it to shift. So, you know, I'm just, that's why I'm not happy, like, you know. So anyway, right, um, I've, I've adjusted it as far as I can, as far as it let me go, and there is definitely a little bit of an improvement. Um, I'm going to leave it there for the moment because I don't want to push my luck with it and I don't want to go and kind of do something that can't be undone so I need to do a bit more reading, I need to talk to people who know what the hell they're doing here because I'm kind of figuring it out as I go along and when it starts getting into things that could potentially damage the engine it's, you know, you're going down a bad path there. The other thing I do want to do is I'm going to check the, the camshaft timing just cause, just to rule out everything else as well and um, I am, um, I'm, I'm kind of I'm still not happy, but I'm happier in that uh, I kind of feel like, uh, well, I now know the, the turbo is doing its job. Uh, the injection pump timing is, is spot on. The um, uh, fueling seems to be kind of within the ballpark of where it should be now. And um, yeah, we'll just have to kind of do a little bit of a, a little bit more reading and um, we'll pick this up again. Uh, but I think I'm kind of happy enough that it'll it'll do the job for me to get the, uh, to get to where I want to go tomorrow. So um, uh, yeah, we'll we'll pick this up in a future video. Anyway, look, thanks for watching and um, I will uh, chat to you soon.